So, as we know, Taylor Horton Tucker plays for the Utah Jazz. He is currently the starting point guard through three games. How much longer this will last, though, is a question that we're going to have to discuss today. Now, standing at the height of 6'4 and 235 pounds at the age of 22, it would seem as though Taylor Horton Tucker has a bright future in the NBA. And currently, it's looking very interesting for his stint with the Utah Jazz. As we know, last season, he played pretty solid for them in the absence of Mike Conley post his trade and honestly over the course of the remainder of the season. However, starting off this season, there was going to be a little training camp battle between all the guards that they had on the roster to determine who would start at the shooting guard spot and who would start at the point guard spot. Well, Jordan Clarkson went out at shooting guard, and while his season hasn't been going particularly as great as we would have hoped, seeing as his shooting splits are very much below his career averages, we excuse him because he did play very well in the final minute and a half stretch of their lone win this season against the Clippers, as he did end up hitting that game winner and defended Kawhi Leonard in a way that we have never seen him give defensive attention and attentiveness towards any particular possession previous to now. Taylor Horton Tucker is in a more curious position because he, despite his large frame, is capable of guarding a lot of the bigger guards and smaller forwards that end up being switched onto him in matchups. However, we've seen Will Hardy have this team in a lot of different zone looks so far. And while they have had some success, they've also had a lot of not success. And I would attribute some of that specifically to Taylor Horton Tucker's end. There's been a lot of situations where he's been too high when he's been helping off of his man or kind of hedging to get into a passing lane and his teammates have to let him know that he needs to slide back or get back over to his side just a little bit so that he doesn't get exposed for it. Now thus far there hasn't been too many mishaps as far as people getting the ball to his man and them hitting the shot but there have been a considerable amount of shots taken in those situations. However, the likelihood of him making an adjustment is not likely up until the man that he's helping off of does hit those shots, so I have to give him credit there. The more overarching issue is, the reason why they were having such a big point guard battle is because they don't have very many pure point guard tendency players on the roster. And when the heart and soul of this team is Lowry Markkinen, he's not known for being a very much a playmaker himself. With that being said, we've seen a lot of different action from a bunch of different guards, and some of them have had good games, other times they've had straight up abysmal games. While Taylor Horton Tucker has been solid on defense with the exception of his rotations in zone specific settings, his offense is where I find the most gripes with his game. Now he's averaging 7.3 points to go along with 1.3 rebounds and 4.3 assists. However, that's slightly skewed because in the first game against the Kings, he had four assists, against the Clippers, he had eight assists and his best showing in this season. And then against the Suns in a blowout fashion, he only had one assist across 16 minutes. Against the Kings, he shot three of nine from the field, two of four from three, had one rebound, four assists, and a block, which totaled out to eight points as well. Against the Clippers in his best showing, he had 10 points shooting three of 10 from the field, going two of five from beyond the arc, with three rebounds, eight assists, three steals, and a block. And then in the most recent blowout game, he played in 16 minutes and had four points shooting one of seven from the field, 0 of three from beyond the arc, with no rebounds, one assist, and one steal. Now the most difficult part about starting him is the fact that while he does provide some level of defensive upside, the offense just hasn't been coming together with him. And I was actually discussing in one of the comment sections what my issues were with his game, and the retort that I was provided with is that he hadn't become accustomed to the system yet, which is a fair play. And it seems like a lot of times, a lot of the guards just aren't yet as comfortable as we would hope they would look perhaps maybe 20, 30, 40-ish games into the season, as a lot of them don't have a lot of continuity over the past couple of years. With that being said, for him to start and for him to be taking upwards of seven to 10 shots, he has to hit more of them. And the last game, I believe, was a big indicator that he might not be starting this upcoming game against the Nuggets. Seeing as he did manage to jack up seven shots in only 16 minutes, and he went one of seven for them, it was problematic. Now, I believe the thing that kept him on the court the previous two games was the fact that he did go 2 of 4 and 2 of 5 from 3, which is above 40%, which would be effectively, across an 82-game schedule, much better than league average. However, after missing all three that he took in the last game, he dropped his percentage down to 33%, which makes it seem like he's just in line with his other numbers. 
I do believe that he has improved, particularly off his catch and shoot jumper. The motion looks a lot more smooth and the rotation on the ball allows it in such a way that he doesn't have too many hard misses. That being said, at times the type of shots that he takes are a bit questionable and more so the fact that he misses and still is willing to take the shots that he does. I have no desire for this to harm his ability to be productive when he's on the court because I don't want his self-confidence to take a hit. But with that being said, something does need to be done with him. And I believe that moving him temporarily, at least to the bench, would be for the better of the team. Colin Sexton did have a good night the previous evening and he seems to be getting better with more reps and more minutes. So with that being said, I believe that he might be the next man up. I was a proponent for specifically Chris Dunn coming out the gate and eventually Keontae George taking the helm whenever he was prepared later on in the season. But I think right now, Colin Sexton just from an energy standpoint and the mentality that he brings to the game, despite his shortcomings as a playmaker, might be important to have on the court considering that he's playing more than 20 minutes a night anyways. Him being in a starting position similar to Taylor Horton Tucker was where in the first game THT played 22 minutes then 27 then only 16. I think that those are comfortable minutes that Colin Sexton could play and even if he doesn't play particularly well you can always pull him just like you did with THT and put somebody else on the floor. With that being said, I don't want it to come across as though I'm hating on THT because I do believe that he does a lot of things in the game well, but I believe that one of the biggest issues that we're experiencing with him is just him not being comfortable. And because he's not comfortable, he isn't playing to his typical best, which is ultimately hurting the team when you need that extra scoring punch from specifically the guard positions. Now, there's been a lot of times where he does make accurate reads, but the ball gets out too late. And I believe that the gears in his brain are just shifting a little bit too long and it's taking too long for him to make the adjustment to get the ball out, which prevents shots from being out as wide open as they would be and kind of leaves the players out of position and unable to do what they originally intended to once they get received the pass from him. Admittedly, I will be doing a separate video likely to come out tomorrow regarding Jordan Clarkson's issues, but Jordan Clarkson's issues have been mitigated by the fact that he seems to always make the timeliest play that the team needs when it really comes down to it, which there's something to be said about that because regardless of what kind of night you're having, if you're not shooting well from the floor, you have to be able to do something in the game well. And so far, Jordan Clarkson has, by my eye, seem like the better overall defender simply because they are running a lot more zone looks and he is recovering better out when he's doing help defense assignments and not over helping. With that being said, you guys let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if you think THT should continue to start. Let me know if you think this is just a slump or if this is likely how his season is going to continue to go and who you think the starting point guard should be for the Utah Jazz going forward. At the very least, up through this next stretch of rough games where a lot of experiences and a lot of learning opportunities are bound to unfold. Thanks for tuning in this video. As always, it's your boy Wraith Hoops. Make sure to like the video, subscribe, turn on post notifications, and as always, good morning, good evening, good night, no matter where you are on the globe watching. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.